You have seen them, the gurus promising trading bots with a 100% win rate. Sounds amazing, right? If it really worked, they'd all be billionaires by now. But I had to know, what if they're actually telling the truth? So I built a trading bot myself, step by step, using their exact advice. And at first, the results look unbelievable because I got a model which was 81% accurate. That is more than enough. But stay with me because what I discovered after will change the way you see the so-called money machines forever. This is part one of a three video series and by the end, I promise you'll know the truth that you never wanted to see. Let's start with understanding the bot, the training procedure, the data collection, everything. A few keynotes. This is an educational video. So please do not follow this as a financial advice. Any strategy you get, you need to backtest to get the proofs. And like I said before, this is a three part series. And in the second part, it will be about backtesting. Now, let me start with the first step, which is data collection. This YF trading data collector is a class which will take two parameters, ticker and period. Right now, I'll take years of data all right so i'm gonna fetch those data for which i'm using the yahoo finance library dot ticker class which will get the stock ticker and once i call the history it will take the history of data for that stock here i'm going to take the date column and then convert into a, a date time column basically and then set it as index so that i can sort it in terms of date here already there are lots of youtube gurus even the ones i followed uh, made this mistake they did train to split but when they back test right they'll filter they'll do back testing on last one year or last three months or whatever it is um here i filtered out last one year though I, it is written last three months here i was planning for three months filtration but it's not it's a one year filtration why i'm doing this you will see in the back testing video and there's a hint at the end of this video so stay to the end and finally i'm getting the basic information of the stock which will print the name ticker sector uh industry of the uh, stock what is the current price what has been the 52 week high low and then the total trading days which is consisted in this data so that is about the data collection once you call that you'll get the data and also you'll what will be in this data you'll have a data which has open high low close volume but these data are just raw numbers. It doesn't tell a story, right? Let's make it tell a story with the help of feature engineering. I hope you all know or at least heard of this word technical indicators. People who know even the basics of trading will know that there is something like that, especially the indicators like super trend. If I want to create that manually, it will take a long time. So what I can do here, I can just use a Pythonic implementation, which is TA. This feature engineer class will use this technical analysis library where it will take the data and will compute more than 20 indicators of which some are key. I'm not going to go into details because this is an AI based video, not a trading focused video, right? The more important thing is creation of the target variables here. We'll look at the next few days and based on that, if it has increased, we'll buy and if it is decreased, we'll sell that is target right now. It is not just raw numbers. It's a story of greed, human emotions and such. Trading is about market psychology and the psychology interpretation can be seen as technical indicators to some extent. I'm not saying these are accurate, but these are some way you can quantify the market. And we have created our features, but don't you think 20 plus already there is open high low close volume which is 5 here there is 21 26 is a bit huge right so i made this feature selector rather than with uh just conventional pearson correlation method which everyone will say just do pearson correlation some will say put all those features and they'll say it will work but to some extent if you put all of those either some of those are going to negatively impact your model or else it is just going to make some noise without giving any value to the model. So feature selection can be done. That is one point. Some gurus do tell that, but they'll say like, yeah, let's do Pearson correlation. But how much is the model gaining out of it? That's not something they see. Some will say then, okay, let's do a model based. I did that, but the results were surprising. At first time, I got different features, but when I did a stratified K fold CV, which is to run the model n number of times with this method, permutation importance. What is this method about? This method is about shuffling the values of the features and seeing how much it impacts the performance. Here, what I have done is I've taken a feature selector class where it will take data, the number of splits or the number of 
false. I want to run for a random state which is just a seed for you all to replicate and then a saving path. Why I need a saving path you will see or else if you have guessed already let me know in the comment section. In select features function which is the function uh, we will be using. First I am getting the independent features for which I am dropping the date and then target. We don't need a target value right. So remove that as well. If you do that you will get around 25 uh, features and then I am just creating an empty uh, data frame which is importance and it has a column known as importance. Here we will start by creating a, a cross validation loop stratified k fold class with number of splits shuffle set to true and then a random state. We will go through each of those splits and then we'll get the features. Once that is done, we'll train the model. Once the model is trained, which is light GBM. Why light GBM? It is because uh, it is the most lightweight model and also the most accurate model I have come across. That's why I'm using that. I've initialized it with some uh, basic values. We are training that with an eval set. And here is where the key stuff comes. Permutation importance where you will provide your model, your uh, test set and then you will have the number of repeats. How many times do you want to repeat this uh, shuffling stuffs? Okay. And then the random state to again set a seed. Once you do that, you will get the importance for this fold. We will just add those uh, to the importance data frame. And once all of these folds are completed, we will do an average across the importance with the number of splits. We are sorting it and then I am taking the first 12 features. Please don't ask why 12 because I don't have an answer for it. 12 was just a number which came to my mind and I just used it. That's all. Once that is done, uh, we are plotting the feature importance here which is bar graph being plotted. Here I've just plotted the first 10. It will also write it in the save path. That's why I had the save path. We have collected the data, we engineered the data, the processing are done, selected the features. Let's go for the training. This is the basic trainer where you will prepare the data with the help of the standard scaler. First do a train test split. When you call the scaler, you will do a fit transform for X train and once you have fitted it for your training data, make sure you just call the transform for testing because the mean, your uh, standard deviation, all of those will be calculated according to your trading set. So just call the transform and once that is done, I'll train the model and then evaluate the model. But that is not correct, right? Let's do something bigger. That is why I came up with this hyperparameter tuning trainer. Here it will take a few other parameters, X, Y, model path, scalar path, eval scores path F, and then it will initialize the standard scalar. That is also fine. And here if you see, I have a train function. First it calls the prepared data, which is as same as the basic trainer. Take the data, do a train test split and then scale it. Once that is done, I'll go to optimize hyperparameters. You see, I just created a basic model uh, before, right? I don't know which are the optimized values. So I came up uh, with this function, which is optimize hyperparameter, which will create a study with an idea to maximize the F1 score. Now, these might be very uh, jargon words for you. Let me break it down. The method which I'm doing now is hyperparameter tuning and for that, the library which is best to do that is Optuna. So what it does is it will just make a combination of parameters out of this parameters and then it will try to train the model with that and then it will get the score. It will do this for n number of trials. Okay, so for example, it is 50. It will try 50 different combinations with this parameter and 50 different scores will be there and whichever parameters gave the best score, that means it is the best parameter out of those 50, right? That is the idea here. We'll get the best parameters uh, values for these parameters. Number of estimators, learning rate, max depth, num leaves and so on and so forth. So once you get those best parameters, which is your training setup for us right now, we'll call the train model function, which will take the best parameters and then fit the model with that. We'll also provide the eval set so that it can evaluate. But we are going to do a separate evaluate model function where we'll predict values for the X test scaled and once those are predicted, we'll calculate the accuracy score, F1 score, ROCAC score and then a classification report is printed. Finally, those are saved in eval scores path. Okay, that's why the eval scores path was there here. And then we are also saving the model which will save the model and the scaler. Like I said, the scaler has some configurations. Those needs to be replicated at runtime. That's why it is set like this. Okay. So now these are fine. 
you understand the components but you'll ask okay these are fine just tell me how i need to train right i have collected all of those in this separate file which is known as train module which will integrate all of those okay first i'm getting my config from the training configuration i haven't introduced that file for a reason see here you need to provide your stock ticker you need to provide the years how many years do you want the forward days like i said how many days do you want to see in the forward and then say like you know i need to buy or sell um the base artifacts path the folder in which you need to save your folds files and then uh the the file names for each of those your model file name for example i have kept it as lgb a model scalar as scalar the selected features name for that selected features dot pickle uh, feature importance that graph uh, will be saved as feature importance dot png eval scores as evaluation scores dot json all right and then these functions uh, will join the base path along with the file name and yeah so that is about the configuration you can just change it however you want let me go back to the train module first we are calling the data collector with the ticker and the period so once that is done uh, i'm taking the open high low close volume out of it so once these are done next we are getting the feature engineer so that uh the technical analysis the target variable creation those are done and once those are done uh, we are selecting the top features filtering out those features here along with the target being provided again and once these are done we are sending it to the trainer we are training it and then we are testing it here i have a test predict function where you know you load the model you load the scalar basically you will uh, have you know the test data being predicted just a few okay the last five you can see here will be printed you know this is provided just for you to predict if you don't want you can just comment it out why i'm saying this because i already have an api class uh, or api folder which you can use for those runtime predictions how to execute that that also i'll say right now let me sh show you how to train okay i'll go to the instructions or txt i have already created my virtual environment which is trading board i have already activated it i've installed my environments i have set up my config right right now make sure you are in this root folder okay the bot should be visible when you do ls okay paste this command and hit enter it will take a few minutes let's wait for that um i think the feature selection should be done here um let me go to artifacts um, models i think it's real and here there is feature uh, i think that is what is there yeah in feature importance if you see uh out of all of those which we gave sma 50 was 16 percent important uh, volume sma was 16 percent important after that bollinger band width was nine percent important low was eight percent atr average true range was nine percent macd was seven percent uh ema sma bb high okay though i like rsi rsi is even isn't even there here all right this shows that you can't put all of your features see already that is five percent only important if you give something which is one person important it's just going to negatively impact your model right and right now we have our training compute uh, completed let's see the roc curve it is 86 aec score that's a good score even surprising i'll say um let's let me first see the scores i'll give you my perspective after that accuracy is 79 and then the f1 score is 82 uh a she score is 86 and then uh for zero and one this seems to be balanced you know uh, buy and sell signals it is balanced in terms of its response but here comes the question if i can create a model which is approximately 80 percent accurate shouldn't i be a millionaire right now that was the question i started with this video right we have come up to a model which is giving 78 percent i already trained with an another set of parameters and it gave 81 percent um but all of those are confusing right it's not trustable for us right now that's where i did back testing i'm just going to show you those results okay please come for the next video as well <laughs> i'm showing you the end result but i'm not showing you what all i did okay first one was testing it in the same configuration okay but what i did here was something different to prove that the gurus made a mistake this is a 
place where what I did was I didn't filter out the last one year data. Okay, so once I did that, here if you see, I have 120% returns and the drawdown is just 6%. This is an amazing model because out of the 17 trades I made, 14 have been profitable. Okay, so if I make 14 by 17, um, how much percentage would that be? I'm assuming it will be around 85 to 86 percent. You know, I think that should be the value. Um, if I'm getting 86 percent, even just ignore that. I'm getting 120 percent returns in one year. Imagine I have, let's say, like a lakh, and then I'm putting it. I'm getting two lakhs. If I'm putting that, I'm getting four lakhs. You know. I'm just doubling it every year, right? That is not possible. <laughs> if that was the case, I should be billionaire, you know, in next few years. That made me curious and then question a lot of stuff. First, if you train it with one stock, you can't generalize it with other stock, even though we are just using technical analysis values. But why I'm saying this? This is very obvious. Yes. But the people who I followed never told me that, you know, like you can't generalize it for other stocks. As a beginner, I won't know, right? I'll just implement it for any other stocks I want. That was not the case. Here you can see my mo my model didn't even make a trade, right? If I had just bought here at 10,000 and then I hold it out, right? In the year end, I would have got 12,500. That is even better. Now, coming on to the change I made, right? If I had, you know, uh, filtered it out, which is the current uh, strategy, I filtered out the data, right? my drawdown is 26 percent that is huge okay and then the total returns i have got is around 1900 you know which is around 1.9 percent sorry 19 percent yeah 19 percent 19 percent is fine you know 19 percent is acceptable but still 19 percent being cumulative is something bigger right if i can get 20 percent each year i'm compounding it that is something you know still not that acceptable for me because even if you see uh, the win rate here profit to loss it is around um 70 percent 75 percent i've never seen a strategy do that which means we have been lied to a lot that is what i'm going to prove in the next video stay till the end in the next video as well in this video you have stay till the end which means you're also having a similar perspective like me and i congratulate you all for questioning everything you see i hope you all like this video if you like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon i'll see you all in the next video of the series until then bye bye